those are samples in the S950. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set my tempo. My tempo is set to 101.2. Hey, what's up? I'm Doc. I'm one of the Sample Kings. And of course, this is our S950 video. Well, you know the deal. Time to get busy. We're going to show you the front and the back so you can get busy with this classic sampler. We love it. We still have it in our studio. We're going to use a special friend that came in today, the SP1200, to trigger the samples on our S950. Let's get busy. Now this is the back of our S950. As you can see right here, we have our mix output. These are all our outputs. We have a left and right also for a left and right stereo output. You can send your samples out of left or right, or take a st stereo sample in, you can send them out left and right. We have channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can have separate eight outputs. We can have uh, left and right outputs. We can have mix out. We can have all on the same time. It's really cool. Next, we have our voice out. We send voice data out from the S950. We have our MIDI parameters. We have our MIDI section right here for MIDI input, MIDI out, and MIDI through. We have our RS. 232C input. I haven't seen this in years. If you can find a connection for this, you're lucky. Let me know. <laughs> okay, whenever you hook up your S950, it's important to make sure you've got some cable. See this? I have a color-coded system sometimes to make sure I have the right cable to go into one, two, three, four, five, or six. I may want to make sure I put red here and make sure the opposite end corresponds to the input I want to have the input, the output rather, of this cable going to. Or I can use also white here. So I prefer use a color code, and if not, always tag to know what each cable and its number is. Corresponds to the other end of the cable of your snake. This is the front of our S950. Now you gotta be familiar with your modes. And they're right here. We have play, record, edit sample, edit program, MIDI. Utility, we have our disc and master tune, which is pretty obvious. Now in play mode, we can select various programs to play. As you can see, I have programs. I can press like one and it goes to this tone program. Or I can press two and it goes to this program right here. We can go to record. We can record a new sample in. We can even edit that sample here. Now the cool thing around getting to each mode in order to get from one section to the next, we can go from one page to the next. As you can see here, that's two. I can go here and press page again. That's three, four, five, and so on. That's how we can get to see the various pages and the parameters we can actually edit in our 950 by seeing the modes and then using your page selection. Now to move around any screen, move your cursor. You can see here, in this line, we can select here and copy. Move the cursor again. In the bottom line, we can either rename the sample or press the minus sign to delete that sample. Here in program, move the cursor again. We can change the MIDI. See, we can change the key sound. So, check this out. The cursor gets you around on that particular page. Now, sometimes I'm going to put parameters in and we have our keypad right here. We have to put a off or an on or a plus or a minus, or of course, from one to zero. Now this little section here is sort of like a little crib note to help you get around. If you understand certain things you have to always probably do is remember how to do replay, start point, end point. These particular items are belong to each specific mode that we would normally use a lot in programming. Particularly, of course, save, erase, and of course, edit our program and edit our sample. You can also create space for letters. You can also go to letters. Enter button. This is a playback button. Let's say we got a sample in here. I'm going to go to edit sample right now. I just press edit sample right here. I got this beat called 808 beat. I'm going to press P to play back that beat. 
Can I hear that beat? I gotta go to monitor. I wanna pick the program. I'll press enter here. I'll go back to the first page. Now I'll press playback. Okay, now I've got that sound lined up. I'll press playback. I can trigger the playback of the sound that we see here in our edit sample. That's how you use your playback. Almost anywhere, providing the actual programs up, it'll trigger that sample right there. Okay, now here, of course, we have our record volume here. We can increase the amount of input, of course, of the signal going in to our S950. Here we can monitor that signal through the monitor. This, of course, is our output for left and right. This is our input signal right here. Input. And this is our mic input. There's a line, this is a mic. We can also use a trigger, a record playback trigger, to trigger the sample. It can be record or trigger to playback. Here, of course, is our control knob. We can circle through our pages also, even through parameters. Once we move the cursor over, we can use the control knob to get the parameters faster or to run through our pages quicker. Okay, it's time to sample. Let's get busy. Now, of course, we have our contrast knob, right? See that? We can change the contrast of our display. So you can't see it now. I can't even see it. But at this angle, I do this, and you can see that. See that? It's really cool. Now, also, we got our power button. Turn it on and off. And here we have our floppy disk drive for our 3.5 floppy disk. Bam! Pop it in there. It's important to always have a disk in here whenever transporting this S950. It's important that way. You don't mess up the drive. It's going to be hard to replace these things one day. Okay. Well, it's time to sample. Let's get busy. Oh, Mr. Wizard. When will it be time for me to get that new hit record? Oh, <laughs> how you doing? That's my... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I always want to do that. It's really funny. So anyway, let's check it out. We're going to take these samples now, and we're going to take them and put them in the MPC. No wrong, in our S950. We're going to take our samples now. We're going to take samples on S950. Get that sound you want. Get your CD out your record. It's time to sample. Let's get busy. Okay, well look, now it's time to sample something. I got one of my Sample King CDs out here, which is like our hip-hop guitar. It's a really hot CD we're selling. And um, we're going to put it in here, and we're going to check it out and take a sample. I'm going to press record. Now the first page I get here is the name of sample to be recorded. You want to get that name right. I'm going to call this one 2. As you can see, I called it 2. Now I'm going to press enter. Okay. Next page. I'm going to use this program I already set up. I have a beat in it already. I want to make sure my audio source is an analog input. It's not optical. It's not phono. But I have an analog input. Next, we'll select our bandwidth. As you can see here, we can go from 3000 to 19002. In this case, I only need a smaller bandwidth. I don't want to get nothing really high. I'm not trying to get a really ultra high sample. This is a 950, so it gets a little darker sound. I get a little darker sound of this. I'm not going to use so many frequencies to sample. I'm going to go within the 10K range. You got that? It's 10,000 hertz previous selection we had before. Now here, the amount of recording time we're going to have at that particular setting, which here is the audio bandwidth, we can have between here and here, up to almost 20 seconds. I'm going to take a two second sample. I have increased, let's, let's go back to here. I'm going to increase the sample. I'm going to turn the knob, the dial. See this? I'm turning my dial right here. I'm increasing the amount of sample to the maximum I can go to on this particular sample. I'm going to go, let's say, I'm going to do almost five seconds, say, a little guitar pot. I can chop it up or something. Right there is good enough for me. I'm going to go here to next page. 
I'm gonna make sure that this key is where it's gonna be played at naturally. I hit that one pad, that's where the natural sound of it's gonna be. But actually, I'm gonna pick a pad to play with. I want it to be natural with this pad here, 42. Now, see that? That's F1. I'm using my SB1200 to trigger the sound. Because the MIDI output here is showing it here. See that? So I know that when I hit this particular pad and it's on a particular bank, I know that that's what the sample I'm taking now will sound natural at. See? That'll be the pitch of sound being recorded. Next, we have start with any key. I can press any key to start. I can press a foot switch to start the sample being, in, uh, being recorded. I can also do the audio level. I'll select audio level, and here I have a threshold, as you can see, this big T here. And this knob, this knob here, sets the trigger level. I can turn them down to there, and once it passes this trigger level, it starts to sample. So right now, we're going to take a little sample. We're going to press our play on our CD, and see, there's a level. See, now watch it. Passes it, you get a little sharp sign there. See that? So we're taking a sample in. I want to adjust my record level right here and get it to peak out to the right amount. See that? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, I like that. Get my sound proper. See the level there. And so, enter when ready. That's what we could, right? So I'm press enter here. See, so hit the level, it's recording. Now, I can either keep it or I'll do it again. I can press three. I'm ready again with the same sound. I'm ready with that sound right now. As you can see the little guitar part going by. Now, I press enter. Three, enter. Check that out. That's enter. That's pretty cool right there. And we got the sample in there. It's perfect right now. Now what we got to do is turn this down and we're ready to go. We'll play our sample back now. This video is going to explain a lot of things that you probably uh, don't understand about the S950. But you need to also go over some pages we don't even show you because you need to really explore further. This video is about giving you a really strong function, excuse me, this video is about giving you a stronger understanding of how the S950 works. It's mainly a sampler. So you want to have something to trigger the samples in the S950. In this video we use the SP1200. So you may want to use a keyboard or even, you know, you never know, another drum machine. You can use that as a drum machine itself. Put other sounds in here. This machine was very popular in the late 80s. And it's a great machine to use because you can actually get some really nice, cool, analog -y sounds. A lot of hip-hop producers swear by it. They even use it, and they, they wouldn't even tell nobody, you know, because they're like, hey, it gives their sound that sound. We like it. We still own it. And, of course, uh, if you need any more information, visit us at SampleKings.com. If you need any more information about your S950, visit us at SampleKings.com. I'm Doc. I'll check you later. Okay, I've taken a sample. It's time to edit that sample. I'll press Edit Sample, and here we are. We have the sample right there. In order to hear it back, I have here it says Select Program. I've got Monitor chosen. I just want to monitor the output and hear what this particular sample sounds like. So I hit the playback. If I let go, it stops. Hold it down, it plays it to the end. Now, that's my sample I just took. I can go to my next page. I've chosen a monitor to hear back from. I can increase the loudness. Let's move the cursor over here. Turn up more. Now, this is the pitch that it sounds most natural at, which is C60, which is middle C on the keyboard. 
And they also have fine tune. I could fine tune the pitch. I could say, I'm going to do this thing to it. And go like, play. Oh, yeah. Oh, lower. Oh, uh, yeah. Back it up. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Low, down, up. So you can always change the pitch of that particular sample when you edit the sample. We have replay. Now, by pressing it, clicking here, that's one shot. That means you hit it one shot. Bam. Then we got looping where it goes to the end here. We can go to like... Uh, Move the cursor to here. Go to two. Go to search you to me. And then it'll you know, try to loop it. And then go to the end. But it can't loop it. We must set the loop parameters in. If you want to loop it to itself. We also have alternate, which you press three. And it'll alternate between one shot and looping. Now, in this case, we just want to do the one shot. That way we can trigger it from another source and make that source sequence the triggering of this sample. We have the time direction. Normal, of course, and then it's also reverse. We can go to here, move the cursor over, press 2, and press enter, and we've got reverse. Well, that's cool. That's going to be my next new track. I like that. Oh, that's hot. That's really hot. I'm feeling that. That's really cool now. So now we're going to do, we're going to got that plugged in. We're going to go back to one. Let's press hit for one. Let's press enter. And we're back in the natural direction that it was intended to be in right there. We'll go here to track number, right on the page number five. We got a start point. We can change the start point of that sample. We can move the cursor over to right there and then press playback. We can go back to the top. Or go up there. That's the course, and here is the fine tune. We get the right, the right piece you want to get that sample. Let's say we're here, we got this thing. Here's a, this is a little bit late. Well, I'll turn this up some. I want to fine tune the first hit. Yeah, and turn this up to nine. And enter. You want to get the right feel when you hit that sample. I like that. Next, we'll go to the next page. We can get the end point of our sample. We can press enter. That sounded not all that much. I don't need that much of the sample. I don't even want it enough to do like I'm going to loop it to or, or I might only want once. See that? I can get a little bit more to the end. That's really cool. Let's turn my control knob. I can get more on the end of it. Or get less. So you want to get the right size of the sample you want. Next page. Now here we can set a loop length. As you saw earlier, it was just like doing some weird thing at the end of a loop. Here we can select that. Then go ahead and loop. Course or fine. Let's see what a loop at that point there. And we press enter. And then I can go back here and say put the loop. So here it goes to the end of the sample. And press enter. So let's say you had a beat. Just make sure the beat starts and ends in the right time, and you can loop it internally. Really cool. Now, go back to here. And go to the page. Now we also have here, besides our loop length, we have our crossfade. How can get the samples to crossfade against each other? We can also resample a sample. We can take a sample and resample it at half the bandwidth and discard it before and start time. Let's say we got a sample we like, you know, the beginning and end we like totally, and we want to discard some time. We can go right down to here and press enter, and when we do, we'll get rid of the before start and the after end. Now on this screen on page 10, we can resample at half the bandwidth. We'll pick the sound we, we have, let's say, for example, it'll resample it at half the bandwidth. You might even get a darker bass sound with some basses that way. You have to experiment and understand how it'll help your sound. We can also, on page 10, we can discard the start after end. So if you get the start and end where you want it, this will discard any extra sample time that you're not going to use. You'll press enter here and you get the perfect size sample you want without wasting memory. 
We can also cut up in slices and make different slices of the same sample. We can slice crossfade time. And we have a slice order, which slice will play first. We can time stretch that sample. And that's it. Okay, I've got my sample, which I like right here. So I can Yo, what's up? Now it's time to edit our program. Now we've got our samples. We have to make a program up. Now a program consists of key groups. Now this means that, let's say, one key group could be a certain length on the keyboard. I got a keyboard right here. Whoa, here it is right here, okay? Check this out. Now, for example, I could have a note right here. See that right there? This note here is C. I can make this a key group, or I can make it go from all these notes here to here. And this entire range could be one key group. So I can have a sample, let's say it could be a bass sound. I want it to play from this note to this note, including all these other black keys here. That would be my key group range. Or, I may only want one sample to play. I want this one sample to play at C. The key group start, or the first, the low, is here, and the high is here. Otherwise, this could be the low, and this is the high of that particular key group. You got that? These, it's a key group. It's a range. Or you can have one note or several notes being that range. It's important to understand that, that when you're actually making up a key group in the program, that that particular sample has a range you want to have. Now what's going to happen here, I'm going to use my SP1200, which already has a preset MIDI information. So for example, this first one here is C60. That one's 61. 62, 63, 64, 65. Now according to the keyboard range here, I would have, let's say this is middle C right here, this would be 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, corresponding to each note. This would be C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and so on. So, your key group is very important. Make sure that you have that particular sound to a key group. Now watch this, we'll get busy. Yeah, I can remember what I used to say. Oh yeah, <laughs> Right now, I'm gonna go to a program. I have a bunch of samples, and I've already made a program to go to my SP1200. Now I put down the instrument here in this case, and I put down my RPM, which is my beat per minute, how fast it's gonna go here. So I have a 101, which is 101 BPM. You got that? Cool. That's why I can name my program here. I can also rename it if I want to. I can go to here. I can either copy this program again or select a new program. Or I can rename that program or delete that program. See? As you can do right there. Just follow the cursor. It's pretty simple. Now I go to the next page. Next page is my MIDI program page. See right here? We can control the key loudness and we can also control the positional crossfade off or on. We have our key group. We can select the key group. We have from 0 to 16. We can add a key group. We can put what we can put, get. We can also copy a key group and delete a key group. We have velocity. which switches the threshold. See this here? It's our velocity. That means how hard we hit the actual sample. And here we have the key group on page 5. Now each key group represents the where the sample's at on that key. Let's say a keyboard. Here we have that this sample's triggered at C360. That's the low key and the high key in that key group. The next key group we have here at 61, which is our horn cut. See this? And it's triggered only by this note. That's the low and high key. So any of the notes you hit won't trigger this note, this sample. But it will trigger this sample if we hit C3 sharp 61. And see it's the high and the low. So that's the range of that particular key group. And so we've made each sample, as you can see here, 
have a particular key range so I can trigger that sound by hitting let's say a pad of an instrument that has MIDI output that I send back into here. For example, I can hit a pad and you'll see this little light go on and that's giving me this MIDI light right here. It's receiving a MIDI signal by my hitting the pad in this SP1200. Now I have the SP1200 already set up to go where I have each pad represents a different sound. That's a 808 drum sound. That's my first pad on my SP1200. See? And this says 1. See that? I go to pad 2 and this of course says C3 sharp. I got a little horn cut there. I go to 3. The bass line. See that? So I have each pad which represents that one note which is controlled by this key group. This key group is controlled by that bag. That means that one, I trigger this sample, which is at C60 and the high and low key C60. Only that note will trigger it. And by hitting this pad here on the SP1200, this note here, I've already set to trigger only C3. So when it goes to the mini cable, comes back to the machine, my program is set to trigger that sample. Next, we have the loudest of that key group. We can filter that key group down. I can go to here, move the cursor over, and get to the filtering. change, she can get darker, I can even transpose that sample. So now we can filter the sample and change the actual frequency of that sample. We can even fine tune the filtering. This is cool. And we can notice on page six, we can do it with any one of our key groups. Now I can also affect all the key groups. See that is all? I can change every key group's volume, every key group's filter, every key group's pitch. It's like a master tune for all the key groups. Or we can go individually to any key group and change its pitch, filter, or the transpose or the fine tune of any individual key group. So I'm going to have a sample here, or this sample here. That sounds too loud to me. And we're going like, why is it so loud? And Kenneth says, look, man, turn it down. I go to here, I turn it down. Oh, I turned it down. That control that key group. See that? Really cool. I may want to get the filtering out. Maybe too sharp, too squeaky for me. Well, you know, I want to get that sound. I hit my I like that. It's a darker feel. This is music. You got to be creative with the color you use and how you want to use that particular sample. With the S950, we can control these parameters here in our key group on page six. The next page we have here, we control sample. See here? Activated at minus C. There's no sample here. This is the first key group. If I want to load a sample here, I can change the key group. Control the velocity and the threshold level. We're not going to use that. I can use a loudness filter. We can also change the attack, the decay, the sustain, the release of that particular key group. Of course, and the VCF. We can change the envelope on page 10. The attack, the decay, the sustain, and release for each key group. Velocity, loudness attack, the sensitivity, the filter, the warp. Experiment. Find out how to use these other parameters. We'll teach you the basic functions. From here though, I want you to learn more about the functions with the filters here on 15. We have the one shot which is on and a constant pitch which is off. 
If the constant pitch was off for that key group, no matter how we change the tuning, the pitch will be the same. Remember that. This is our key filter. Now go to the next page. This is our MIDI setup. As you can see here, we're set to all channels for this group. We have our output. This key group is coming out of output 2. There are 8 outputs. I can send a key group on any output I want to send it to. Sometimes when having too many sounds, I will send light sounds on the same output. Like all the hi-hats and the cymbals, I may send output 1 when recording a track on down if I want to. Okay, I've got each sound going to a particular key group, as we know right here. And so I've got each And now I've got my SP-1200 and my S950. Well, here I'm going to do my trigger those sounds. First of all, I want to probably make sure the sound is triggering properly. I'll press these samples here. And a decent level. See that? You hear the sound, it plays to the end. That's of course here in program. As you can see, I make sure everything's a one shot. We make sure that we keep it all as one shot as I'm doing. I make sure it's one shot as I run this program. I've got everything set up. As you can see here, it's a key group too. And it's set up for that, you hit the sound and plays it back. We're totally set up for a transpose properly. Everything apparently is set to go. Now I can go to key group two. Now suppose you got a sample you like, but you don't want it to play to the end. Now here's what I'll, here's what I'll do. You see that says one shot? I'm going to key group number three. Now, that's the bass sound. Now, watch this. I'm going to turn one shot off. I'm going to press off here. See that? We cut it off totally. The one shot's not on. Let's put it back on now. Let's go to on. See that? Make sure you have the one shot set so when you trigger it from a separate source, I can control the start from the beginning again. And that's how I'm doing it. Now the basic thing here is to have the right tempo. In this case, I've already set all these samples up to be at a BPM of 101. So I have this sample, which is my first sample here. make sure all our samples are set up properly in the mix. Now all I have to do is just sit up here and actually just make sure I have the right sound going on. You know? I want to make sure I have the right sound and the right output. So we're checking our outputs, make sure our sources are correct, and uh, make sure our output's right. Great. Well now, I'm going to loop some upbeat up here. Got a loop here on top of here. Now in this case, I'm just going to use my SP-1200, I'll press, get a little metronome going. So I'm going to go back here again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to erase that actually. I'll press erase. Now I'll do it again. 
I'll get my metronome perfect. Share the right quantize. That didn't work out. I want to erase that sound. I'll press erase. Confirm it. I want to hear it back in. So. That's quantized right. I got a bass line here somewhere. Look at that now. It's over here. Oh, it's here. Oh, it's corn. Oh, that's nice. A little cut like a DJ, you know what I mean? Stop that. I want to record that. Cool. on a bass line. I'm going to start recording that sound. I like two, three, four. One, three, four. Two, three, four. See, I'm looping the sounds up in my time 50 using my SP-1200 to trigger the sounds. Even while this program's going along, I can even edit some samples. I can go along here, I've got my loops going, you know, I'm gonna be able to change that bass sound. I'll go and maybe make it a little darker or something. I'm gonna go back to here and look for the key group that bass is on. I mean, there it is right there, I've named the sample. I'll go to this key group, you know, I might want to filter it down darker, bring it down. You hear, you hear it there? A little bass, watch this. That's why this machine's so cool. When you filter down a little sample from a record, you get a nice bassy, almost a cool sound. Now here's how it was before, watch this. I'm gonna move the cursor back here to find. So you can hear more of it in the background. Here, down here. No, oh, it's a deep filter. And you can adjust the level of that particular sample in that keeper. I'm gonna go here. 
and say, you know, that beat sounds cool. I might want to like, uh, I don't know. Let's increase the level of that beat. Let's get the sound to a Donnie song. So you can adjust the parameters. I may want to just do some transposing or whatever. It's really cool. So we use our S950 to maintain our samples, keep them in a the proper key group. We can adjust those samples in that key group. We're using, of course, an SP1200, the classic setup. And since the beginning of hip hop, it's been a pretty big setup. Is the SP1200 and the S950. But you can use a keyboard or any MIDI instrument that sends MIDI inf information or MIDI data out, of course. And we can know it's being received here by seeing our MIDI received, as you know already. And that's how our S950 works. How you doing guys? We're back again. That was really, really cool, you know what I mean? About how to use your edit program. Remember, they're just key groups. Know your key groups. Now, an important thing here is in order to know what, let's say I hit this pad, I need to know what MIDI note that is. This is all about MIDI. How to set the S950 for MIDI Omni mode and how to know what note is this. You don't have a keyboard to tell us, so what note is that? What MIDI note is that? You're going to find out how the S950 receives MIDI information. Check it out. Okay, here, I'm going to program go to MIDI. I'm in MIDI now. Now here, as you can see on page 1, I'm set to basic MIDI channel. That's from 1 to 16. Here it's set to 1. Now I have my Omni on or off. I have my Omni on. I want to see all MIDI information. Next, we can MIDI test. But here the most important thing I want to make sure I have is the MIDI receive monitor. That means when I hit a particular key on a keyboard that I want to trigger a sample, I may want to make sure what that is. For example, I have an, F, an SP1200 right here, and I have each one of these pads set to trigger a particular sample. Now we'll look back on the S950, see that? I hit a pad, it's receiving the mini notes. See that? And you'll see that little light go on there. See that? I'm hitting this little hi-hat, and we can see that it's receiving the MIDI information. As I hit these little pads, the little information here changed in the little window, and you can see it. that 63 is 64, that 65, that 66, and that 67. So I know that these particular buttons are triggering only one MIDI note. See that? Once I know what it is, and I got it, I'm good to go. Now, once you have the information tucked away there on our S950, we can also set it to take program changes. In case you want to change different programs, we have this on. We can actually control that from another output source. And we can control the loudness the pitch wheel information in terms of semitones like we do bend the note on the keyboard. So with S950 we can use it with a keyboard and actually change and bend tones and bend sounds. You can see here by semitones if you want to. And of course this is by seven semitones. Next we have our control. We can use the cable for the RS232, which I haven't seen in years actually. And we can use board. I wouldn't suggest using it. It's not that accurate anymore. It's hard to find. But the best way to control our S950, of course, is through MIDI. And now, we're going to play back that program by using the S950 to trigger it. So we can play a little sequence. Okay, here, I'm going to program go to MIDI. I'm in MIDI now. Now here, as you can see on page 1, I'm set to basic MIDI channel. That's from 1 to 16. Here it's set to 1. I have my Omni on or off. I have my Omni on. I want to see all MIDI information. Next, we can MIDI test. 
But here the most important thing I want to make sure I have is the mini receive monitor. That means when I hit a particular key on a keyboard that I want to trigger a sample, I may want to make sure what that is. For example, I have an, F, an XP1200 right here. And I have each one of these pads set to trigger a particular sample. Now we'll look back on the S950. See that? I hit a pad, it's receiving the mini notes. See that? And you see that little light go on there. See that? I'm hitting this little hi-hat and we can see that it's receiving the MIDI information. As I hit these little pads, the little information here changed in the little window and you can see it. that's 63, it's 64, that's 65, that's 66, and that's 67. So I know that these particular buttons are triggering only one MIDI note. See that? Once I know what it is, and I got it, I'm good to go. Now, once you have the information tucked away there on RS950, we can also set it to take program changes. In case you want to change different programs, we have this on. We can actually control that from another output source. And we can control the loudness, the pitch wheel information, in terms of semitones, like we do bend the note on the keyboard. So with S950, we can use it with a keyboard and actually change and bend tones and bend sounds. You can see here by semitones if you want to. And of course, this is by seven semitones. Next, we have our control. We can use the cable for the RS232, which I haven't seen in years, actually. And we can use board. I wouldn't suggest using it. It's not that accurate anymore. It's hard to find. But the best way to control our S950, of course, is through MIDI. And now, we're going to play back that program by using the S950 to trigger it so we can play a little sequence. Okay, well, that was pretty cool. Maybe it's a great thing to use. Understand it. It'll be your friend. Well, look, it's time to save data. It's important to save the program information, to save the samples that go along with that program. Sometimes you may already have that whole program on a disk you may take one more sample, or you may want to just save that one sample, or delete a sample from the disk, or delete a program from the disk, or save a new program, or edit that program. As you can see, we can save and edit many things. And we're going to do that right now. We're going to save and load. Check it out. Press the disk function. Let's get busy. Now, it's important to always save your data. Once you get something started, you want to save your data. I just pressed disk, as you can see here, and it's an S900 format of this disk. And as you can see here, it's 48% full. Now, I can go to my next page. We can clear the memory and load this entire disk by pressing 1. Or we can just load the disk. Or we can clear previous. Got that? Here we go. We can load a program. We can select a specific program on that disk to load. Let's say, for example, we got some samples on that program we saw I had before. I may want to load a new version of that program. I may have messed up something. I'll go here and find the program I want to use. That's the program on the disk. As you can see, I'm in the disk section. I will now go to here. I can load program only or I can load the program plus the samples that belong to that program. Page 4, we can load sample by pressing enter. We can go to, of course, select a sample we want to load and press enter. Or we can load all the samples. Page 5, we can clear the volume and save the entire memory. That means we can wipe this disk and then save the entire memory. Right, this is right over here, of course, on our drive. We want to make sure that we can save the memory. Page 6. We can save the program if we want. We can save the program, select that program, and we may want to save, well, hey, look, 
the program only or the program and the samples that belong to that program. We can save any sample. Let's say I want to save the one sample I took. I can go back. Well, I want to save that new sample I got. Where is it at? Let me find it. There it is right there. I'll press enter. I can save this sample to my disk. Provided it's big enough. Remember now, you got to make sure you cut your ends off and get the right size sample you got. Because remember, the disk only holds about 1.4 worth of memory. Too big a sample? Won't even be able to save it. We can erase. We can erase stuff off our disk. We can erase the sample. We can erase the entire disk. Wipe the volume. And we can also program. We can erase the program. Anything you want to erase. We can format the entire disk. I can hook up a hard drive to it. And I'm ready to go. On my floppy. It's really cool. We can load drum settings. I can have things like drum sounds. I may want to have this is the drum machine sort of like and have drum sounds in it. I can load the settings I have previously set up on my disk. MIDI program changes. We can park the hard disk. This makes it safe for transport. And these are the functions we have on S950 to save data and to also control and catalog the data that we actually save and store. It's important always to store and save your data constantly. I've got my sounds here. These are sounds in my SP-1200. I also got the sounds that actually trigger the sounds I have that are on the S950. So here, for example, I will take this. I'm going to turn off all these sounds I have here on the SP-1200 that are on this first row. Those are samples in the S950. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set my tempo. My tempo is going to set to 101.2. I've got a little metronome going there. I got my loop going on. It's pretty cool, right? As you can see, I'm in sequence, and this is 101.2. So now I'm going to trigger the rest of my samples. I might want to trigger like a little hi-hat. So, I'm back and record here. I can maybe... Oh, I have a little bass line. That's right. I'm recording now. So I'm using samples to actually make a little beat up, a little sound thing going on here. It's really cool. that makes a horn and flip it a little bit. Now it's important to make sure the right quantize value. I want to stop this and make sure my quantize value is right. Now how I do that here is I'm going to check out to make sure I have the proper segment length and autocorrect. I'll press autocorrect. See it's here set to 8th notes. I want to move it to 16th notes. I'll press enter. We're good to go. I'll press chord. I'm ready for overdub now. Here we go. I'm going to record this now. Right there. right there. Now I'm going to record.
video is going to explain a lot of things that you probably uh, don't understand about the S950. But you need to also go over some pages we don't even show you because you need to really explore further. This video is about giving you a really strong function, excuse me, this video is about giving you a stronger understanding of how the S950 works. It's mainly a sampler. So you want to have something to trigger the samples in the S950. In this video we use the SP1200. So you might want to use a keyboard or even, you know, you never know, another drum machine. You can use that as a drum machine itself. Put other sounds in here. This machine was very popular in the late 80s. And it's a great machine to use because you can actually get some really nice, cool, analog -y sounds. A lot of hip-hop producers swear by it. They even use it, and they, they wouldn't even tell nobody, you know, because they go, hey, it gives their sound that sound. We like it. We still own it. And, of course, uh, if you need any more information, visit us at SampleKings.com. If you need any more information about your S950, visit us at SampleKings.com. I'm Doc. I'll check you later.